I, I would add seasoning to this because it's good. I don't know if I would add seasoning to this. This is really good. You can really taste the butternut squash, which is nice, and it's so soft. You could even mash it with a fork and have like mashed sweet mashed butternut squash, like mashed potatoes with butternut squash. So, but before we get into the butternut squash recipe, I wanted to share a little bit of background. So, my name is Rebecca, I'm a dietitian, and the person, the home cook, the, the passionate person about cooking for one, behind the scenes at Nourish Nutrition Co. and Nourish Nutrition Blog, and also now this new cooking video series, I guess, of how to cook or it's really called not following the recipe. That's what it's called. It's called not following the recipe. And the point here is to show you how to use what you have, make something that's delicious, something to look forward to, but make it adaptable and, and work for you. Because when you're cooking for one, it's helpful to not buy a bunch of different things and to just kind of stick with a couple, especially when it comes to vegetables. Also, it's really easy to feel like you're wasting food. So let's figure out how to make the best, the most with what you have and to use that up and make it delicious. And substitutes, or cooking with substitutes is such a good, helpful tactic for cooking just in general. But focusing on cooking with substitutions when you're cooking for one is extra helpful because fresh produce, fresh food isn't gonna last forever. So let's make the most out of what you have Make the substitutions that you need to use what you have to save money, to s reduce food waste, and to get creative in the kitchen and really enjoy it. Now, that might seem overwhelming, and it can be, but that's why I'm creating this series, to show you how to make the most out of it. Kind of really, really simple substitutions that don't take years and years of of experience cooking or a culinary degree or anything. This The point of this is to make it easy, to make it approachable, and to kind of teach some tips and tricks along the way to make cooking for one easier, more enjoyable, and something that you're like not gonna hate. So I'm gonna be showing you a little bit more of like the whole process here to kind of show how you can incorporate like time-saving tricks and all of these and little things that you can do to make cooking easier, more enjoyable, and I don't know, like save time. That sounds great. So again, I'm showing you a little bit more of the process. In these videos, I kind of hope that I'm going to be like cooking a little bit more on the fly, but I will admit sometimes I'm thinking a lot about the recipes and how I'm gonna use what I already have in the kitchen. And also, and then another way that I'm going to be creating these recipes is to kind of like after I've been testing them or while I'm testing them, sometimes I kind of throw things in and I'm going to be doing that. So it's a little bit off the fly to some degree. It just might be off the fly in this moment. And that's what this recipe is. I've kind of been thinking and dreaming about how to use this butternut squash. And I'm going to be sh like combining a couple of different recipes. So the video for now and then the next video coming out are going to be combined to use up a lot of food that I have in my fridge and freezer, which I'm really excited and excited to share you, share with you. So let's get started. Butternut squash that's frozen, how to cook that up. Let's see what I've got in the fridge. No, it's not in the fridge, it's in the freezer. Okay, so I've got kind of the last I don't know, two cups-ish of butternut squash that I have in the freezer. And the nice thing about this recipe is it's it's like the base recipe, the recipe that's on Nourish Nutrition Blog is so incredibly simple, which means that you can adjust as you want. And it also means that you could batch cook. You can make extra servings and then reheat it for later or eat it cold. The options are endless. I'm a huge fan of making recipes especially for vegetables if I'm like gonna make some extra is to m keep the seasonings really simple and then add in whatever I want later so then it can be adapted and work with whatever it is that I want to eat it with because sometimes that's planned ahead of times and other times it's not and both of those options are great. Okay so as I'm getting started I'm gonna share a little bit about how this recipe originally was and then how I am adjusting it. Okay, so my first step 
here is to turn on the stove. And while this is heating up, I'm going to be breaking, falling out. I'm going to be breaking up my butternut squash here. So to be completely honest, the butternut squash that I have is like so small. It's so small, I kind of don't love it, but I've got what I've got. And so originally this recipe was made to be roasted, which is great, easy, hair in that, oops. Um, it's super easy, which is really nice and um, pretty hands off, which is great when cooking, but I wanted to do this over the stove because it's a little bit easier and I think it's a little bit better way, method of preparation when you're cooking with such small pieces. They get burnt really easily in the oven. Doing or adding anything to this right now, I really want to um, melt the, the ice here. And it's gonna take a little bit since I just turned it on, but I think that's okay. As you can tell, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants here, which is what cooking at home is a lot of times, and that's great. Works just fine. So um, yeah, if I were roasting these in the oven or in an air fryer, I would break them up as much as I could before cooking them because they're gonna cook at much less even time when they're in these big clumps. But when, you're on, when it's on the stove, you can kind of like chop it up while it's cooking and it works okay. I mean, it's not the best, but here's to working with what we got. So because they're so small, you're gonna end up with a little bit of like some big chunks, some smaller, no, 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 no. You're gonna end up with some, excuse me, that's not what I meant. You're gonna end up with some kind of mushy parts and less mushy parts. That's fine. So I'm gonna kind of break this up and then once the ice crystals are melted and also once it's looking a little, just looking less frozen, that's when I'm gonna add in the oil and the seasonings because I want to do that. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind, this is because, of, because I'm using this spatula, they're gonna be a little bit more mushy. Again, it's kind of up to you and your preference. Maybe find some butternut squash that's in bigger chunks or break it apart well and kind of freeze them individually if they're not already. So it kind of depends on where you're able to find it and what's available to you. And this took me three stores to find this in Salt Lake. So I'm using what I've got. The flavor is great. The texture of half of them will be great. and. I feel like that's the part that we often don't talk about when we're talking about cooking is using what you have. It's not gonna be perfect. It'd be great to make it perfect, but it can still taste good and be an enjoyable meal with some kind of mushy parts of butternut squash, and that's fine. Okay, so here we are. It's softening up. And one thing to keep in mind when you're cooking something from frozen is most of all the time, it's the, the water is melting and also evaporating. Your food is gonna, especially when it comes to vegetables, it's gonna be kind of soggier and, and you know, not look the best, and then it's gonna crisp up. And that's why, again, I'm holding off on adding oil and seasonings to it, because we're kind of defrosting it in the pan at this moment. That's the step. Um, I think it's gonna be a good decision to, not stir it up so much because it's breaking them apart. Again, these pieces are pretty small. So I want to, um, I want some pieces I would rather, eh, it's gonna be a mix because of where we're at right now. And that's fine. And it's gonna be good to use up what I have because it saves money and it, it, you're able to like not waste so much food, which is cool. Okay, another part of this is kind of going with the flow, seeing what's happening here. I'm adding more because what am I gonna do with like a half a cup, which turns into a quarter of a cup of butternut squash? I would just rather cook it all now, use it all at once, or split it up depending on what I'm making. 
make the most out of it. So I'm using a pan because I find it a little bit easier and especially with these small pieces again. The original recipe is roasting this butternut squash which is great. You, you definitely are going to get better chunks because of how small this butternut squash is but the flavor is going to be great either way. So my kind of general plan here with this butternut squash is to season it really simply and then I'm going to be adding it to like a warm grain bowl and I'm going to add some um, pan fried, I'm going to cook it the same way, but some asparagus and Brussels sprouts for the next video. So the point here is to kind of use what I have and I'm making my lunch right now and um, kind of show how to add a couple of foods together, make the most out of what you have, adjust recipes to use what you have and what you like, and just to make cooking, I don't know, more interesting, more real, uh, something a little bit closer to what people's experiences are in the kitchen, which is not perfect. So, yeah, that's good for now. Okay, so now most of the water is gone and this is just softening up so much. So it's just gonna be like a mash. <laughs> and here we've got like five or six pieces, that's fine. Um, got some oil that I'm gonna be adding to here. That's gonna help the edges crisp up. And since I'm cooking it in a cast iron skillet, the, hopefully it's going to be nice and seasoned enough that things aren't going to stick too, too bad. And I want, it's going to spit a little bit because there is still some water in here, but I want yeah, it's going to spit a little bit because of the water. Kind of unavoidable when you're cooking from frozen. And uh, I want this to crisp up, so I want it to be hot enough, which is like medium, low, medium, low heat, because cast iron skillet holds on to a lot of heat. Um, so I would go medium, maybe medium high if you're cooking with something else. And try not to touch it so it can brown up and crisp up on an edge. My next step is to add seasonings. I'm, like I mentioned, I'm going to add a dressing to this as I cook it or as I to serve it. So I'm just going to season it very, very simply. And I would recommend seasoning this similarly if you're going to be making extra, kind of like what I'm doing right now. I'm not sure how much I want or how much I'm going to be able to eat. Um, so you can have it for later and use it in a different dish instead of be stuck with whatever flavoring you're adding. Maybe I'll kind of make my own chunks by breaking apart these pieces. Again, I really, part of this is to show kind of the reality of cooking. You don't know exactly what you're getting into. Um, I feel like it's a little bit, I hope it's helpful to kind of see this process as opposed to, I tested this five times before and it works out perfectly. I know it's going to taste good, and here kind of we're learning some lessons on how foods react to different cooking methods and how they're starting out as well. I, I don't think I would have thawed the butternut squash. It would do the exact same thing and it would do it even faster because it's not cooking from the beginning. Um, the oven probably is the best cooking method for this because you just, you don't touch it. You break it all up as much as you can before adding heat and then you let the oven do all the work. It's going to get really um, soft like this is in the oven and then it's going to um, crisp up after that. So I've got the door open because I don't have a fan that works in my kitchen and I think this is about done. It's getting quite brown. Opening the door was a little bit too long for me. But that's okay. Kind of live and learn. This the flavor is gonna be good. Learning through my learning too. So as you can see, it's really browning up, getting a tiny bit burnt in some parts. So I turned off this, the heat, 
and it's very mushy. So, again, the small pieces of butternut squash, maybe not the best way to cook it here, but I mean, there's nothing, if you, excuse me, there's nothing wrong with this, it's just, if you like the butternut squash, squash pieces, you might want to roast them in the oven. And I've cooked them in the air fryer before. They just get real browned. Um, I like the oven better than that. So that's it, here we go. Okay, since the cast iron skillet holds on to the heat a lot, I'm gonna hurry and get this out. So as you can tell, pretty mushy, quite browned nice and kind of orange yellow it's wonderful it's gonna be great in a salad because it's kind of because it's kind of just gonna can spread it out easily in the salad which would be great okay so i've got my plate putting it on here you can eat it this way with maybe i think it would be great with like just a simple protein and maybe so you can see how this is looking kind of seeing the steam it's quite hot um again I, I would add seasoning to this because it's good I don't know if I would add seasoning to this this is really good you can really taste the butter and squash which is nice and it's so soft you could even mash it with a fork and have like mashed sweet mash butternut squash like mashed potatoes with butternut squash. You can also add like herbs to Provence or Italian seasoning. I'm standing with this because it's this is what we've got. Um, could add like something crunchy to it, like sesame, not sesame seeds. You could add sesame seeds. You could add sunflower seeds. You can add cheese. What I'm going to be doing is adding some other vegetables, some grains, feta cheese, and this great dressing that I made for my Mediterranean bowl and have it kind of like a harvesty Mediterranean inspired lunch. It's great. So here we go. Easy. The texture, not what I expected, but it's, it's good. It's really soft, easy to eat, delicious. I don't know what, how, how much better can you get? I don't know. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you found this to be helpful kind of see the messy process of cooking. It's not all pretty little bowls and um, things all set up ahead of time. It's kind of like fly by the seat of your pants and it's a little bit fun that way. You don't know exactly where you're gonna get and learning how to deal with those setbacks or things not going exactly as you want is really helpful. So uh, thanks if you found this interesting or want to kind of follow along and, and get more inspiration or ideas of how to cook for one, how to make it easier, and how to adjust recipes to use what you have through this not following the recipe um, series. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think. Do you, what would you add to this butternut squash? Would you add other flavorings to it? Would you add it to something else to get some flavor? What do you think of the mushy butternut squash versus kind of the cubed butternut squash? Is that good enough for you? Or do you, do you really like those cubes? I'm, I'm really curious. I would love to hear. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.